Now, whereas we investigated the gain bandwidth product of an amplifier in the frequency domain by looking at its transfer function, so basically the Laplace domain, we can also look at properties of amplifiers in the time domain. Well, one of the properties of amplifiers that we understand in the time domain is the linearity of an amplifier. An ideal amplifier is a piece of wire with no resistance and a lot of gain. Now, certainly that kind of amplifier does not exist, but that's the ideal we are striving for. So the diagram on the right hand side here is showing the input voltage down here, where the voltage is plotted across time, but it's flipped over by 90 degrees, so the time is going upwards, and the amplitude of the signal is going towards the left. Up here, we have the low frequency characteristics, the gain of the amplifier, that is the output voltage, plotted across the input voltage, and ideally, that is a very steep line. The derivative of this line is representing the DC gain. Now, if we make sure that the voltage axes have the same scaling, we can project the maxima and the minima of the input signal into the upper graph. And through the gain, we can see that the extrema are getting amplified. Again, if we keep the same voltage scaling, for all the voltage axes, and we end up with the output voltage versus time in the third plot. Now, especially in linear amplifiers, as they are used in operational amplifiers, we have two different transistors processing the positive and the negative half wave, respectively. And as those two transistors are not perfectly balanced and biased equally, we can actually end up having a non-linearity of the gain transfer function when the crossover from the negative to the positive half wave and vice versa is happening. This effect is called the crossover non-linearity. Using the same projections from the input signal onto the gain curve and further on to the output, the extrema stay the same, but whenever the signal is crossing zero, we hit a different gain here, and that results in crossover distortion in the output. Ideally, we wanted the output signal to be the exact same as the input signal, just with a different amplitude, but as we can see in this case here, the zero crossings are actually different and that is expressed as distortion. Another kind of distortion is happening through overdrive, or also called clipping. And that means that the input signal of an amplifier goes beyond the maximum input range, for example, limited by the supply voltages of the amplifier, and therefore the extremum of the input voltages that go beyond the supply rails mean that the head of the sine wave is getting chopped off and the amplifier is simply clipping. This kind of distortion is called clipping distortion. If we transfer those sine waves into the frequency domain by a Fourier series here, for a perfect sine wave, we would expect to get a peak in the amplitude spectrum and all the phases would be zero. As soon as we leave the ideal sine wave, as with the crossover distortion here in the orange waveform, happening three times per period, or by overdriving the amplifier, as in the pink waveform, we start to see harmonics for both of those cases. And you can see that the odd harmonics are typically higher and the even harmonics are lower in the spectrum. Also, the phases now are getting other values than zero and contribute to the so-called phase distortion.
that distortion is represented by a single parameter called total harmonic distortion, which is the square root of the sum of all the RMS values of the harmonics divided by the RMS value of the fundamental. For that calculation, you could also use the peak values as long as you do them both for the harmonics and the fundamental, and that would not change the THD value. For the waveforms that I have shown you in the last slide, the crossover waveform has a distortion of 5.0%, whereas the amplifier with overdrive is clipping and has a distortion of 5.4%. So both of them are in the 5% range. The total harmonic distortion is an attribute that varies widely over different parameters of the actual amplification signal and constellation of the amplifier. Depends on its bandwidth, the maximum power at the amplifier, the amplitude and the frequency of the signal, and how you put a control loop around the amplifier. I would like to show you the distortion of the same operational amplifier that we have looked into previously. And again, it's measured at specific conditions, which were the same as we looked at for the gain phase diagram. But in this case, two further parameters are specified, and that is the voltage amplification. So here it's configured as a buffer amplifier, and the input signal is 1 volt RMS. We can see the frequency dependency of the total harmonic distortion, which is mainly limited by the 20 kHz bandwidth that this amplifier has that we have seen from the transfer function previously. After that, the distortion is rising by around 20 dB per decade. 0 0.001 is a distortion value that is rather low and definitely suitable for audio purposes, which are very demanding on this parameter. Furthermore, these kind of numbers are far away from what we visually could see on an oscilloscope, as you have seen from the visual representation of how 5% distortion are looking like. You could not see the distortion of 0.01 in the time domain measurement of an oscilloscope. Still for the same amplifier, and now with the fixed frequency of the test signal, here 2 kHz and otherwise the same test conditions, we can have a look at the total harmonic distortion as a function of the output voltage of that amplifier. The single line that we have looked at in the last diagram was with the voltage gain of 1, a voltage follower, or also called a buffer, so the input voltage and the output voltage had the same value. And all the other data was not shown in the last diagram, but we could see the frequency dependency. Now in this diagram, we can see that the amplifier is very linear as a dependency of the output voltage, but with the rising gain, so the more voltage we want at the output compared to the input we are feeding the amplifier with, the distortion is rising significantly, up to around 0.4% of distortion. Still, that is not visible by an oscilloscope measurement. Therefore, we use audio analyzers that are operating in the frequency domain and actually do the Fourier analysis for us.